Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about how to get your song on the big dance record level. And in today's video, we're going to talk with Fordes, our guest mix of the week in the episode 101. He is going to share with us how he signed with the Hexacon Records. In a land far, far away, land of sand and desert, a land full of mystery, there were two brothers who conquered the world with their music. Let the journey begin with Electro Vessel by Vesbras. When first time we started in Asia, we had no idea how the dance music industry works. We were just keep making music and that was it. After we moved to the Netherlands and we started to research more, ask more people, watch more YouTube videos and combine those new knowledge and the knowledge and experiences that we had in Asia, we, find, we found that what was the things that we did wrong and that's why we're going to make this video to share those knowledge with you guys. So tips number one is it's not about how many followers you have on social media. Back in the day, we had like 70 or 80,000 followers and we thought, okay, with this number of followers on social media, definitely labels, big labels gonna sign us. Because some of the artists that they released their song with the record label, they only had like few hundred of followers. But of course, that wasn't the case and they never reply our emails when we submitted our song to them. It wasn't about the social media follower, especially for dance labels, the big dance labels. And also it's not only about the music. And again, uh, music is super important. Yeah. Music is number one. And social media is really important. It's really good that if you have a strong social media channels and we're gonna explain it in the future videos. Yeah. And now we're going to show you our interview with the folders that we had with him yesterday. Hey man, how are you? Hey guys, I'm good, and you? Yeah, we're good man, we yeah, are great. Yeah. How do you deal with the corona? Yeah, it's, uh, it's going uh, great actually. I've been able to spend more time on making music okay. than ever before, so yeah, it's fine. How about shows? But, uh, actually, I play, I play every weekend. We haven't had that uh, big lockdown in Sweden. So uh, the regulations are very strict. Yeah. They are only allowing uh, people to sit down at tables. Okay. So no dancing at all. People need to sit down. Uh, so for the last, I think, around four months now, I've only played lounge gigs. Yeah. And then, you know, today, uh, this, uh, this vlog is going to be about how you get your first record label signed. And you, are, you, you recently had a really good song that you signed with Hexagon Records. So yeah. How, how that deal came out and yeah, how was the process? Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not my first uh, label uh, release. I have, I've had uh, re releases on labels before, okay, but yeah. this, is, this is the first big one. Like, yeah, yeah, big one. yeah. Um, so the track actually, it, uh, it was a pretty long process. Me and Kim, the other producer, I've done the track with, we met in 2016 and then we started this track in like a very early shape in 2017. Okay. Wow. But, yeah, but he, he lives uh, around 250 kilometers from me. Yeah. And for the, we only worked on the track when we were together. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't meet that often. So it was a couple of months between every session we had Okay. So for every every time we met, the track took another direction. Of course, yeah. yeah course. Okay, then. Then. So I think in the late in the final version, I don't think there was anything from <laughs> the day we started with the track okay. anymore. You know, not even the chord progression or melody. No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe. Uh, maybe some kind of drum sample but or effect but otherwise yeah, yeah. everything changed yeah. over the course that is a really good choice because we always before had also these mistakes that when we made some melodies or chord progression we thought okay we have to finish this we have to make keep working on it to release that on and then if we want to make another chord progression or another melody it has to be other song not this song anymore. Yeah. It does sometimes something it doesn't work and you the more you push it the more it's gonna go in the wrong direction 
And then yeah, the definitely helps our production recently that we are like trying diff- many different melodies or chord progression in each song, and we just pick one. Yeah, I think it's it's dangerous to get stuck on something too early on in the process. And then to you, you just directly send it to the hexagon, and then they they like it, or there was like a feedback. Or yeah, something. then then of course after. Um, uh, yeah, later on, we, we spend more time in the studio together and more often. And that's when the final track took shape. And we, we got the saxophonist on the track and the vocalist as well. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, after that, we, uh, we played it out a lot and everything. And uh, we're really satisfied with the result and like the feedback we had from people overall. And um, yeah, we sent it to Hexagon and it took them maybe two, three weeks or something and they responded. And uh, to be honest, I wasn't 100% sure that they would, that the track would even fit Hexagon. Yeah, yeah. Every time I send out a track, I really go into and check what the label has released and what kind of vibe they're currently at because even if I know that, for example, uh, Protocol released a certain sound today, maybe I have a track finished in three, four months from now or something like that. And then at that time, their yeah. sound will be totally different. That is, I think, the main so, thing. That sometimes it doesn't mean that the song is bad when the rebel are rejecting. It just means that in that particular time, they don't want to release that type of a style. 100%. So, but for this track, I was thinking like, is this correct for, is it good to send this track to Hexagon or not? And it had, it, it has those futuristic elements yeah. uh, and cool sounds, but at the same time, I didn't really hear, uh, like the other releases didn't sound the same as this one. Or maybe that's why they like it. Yeah, I think that, sax- that saxophone, it really plays an important part in yeah. the song. And Definitely. why did you choose Hexagon? I'm I'm a big fan of Hexagon. I um, that's uh, that's the kind of sound I really enjoy playing out. Mm, exactly. Uh, it has uh, like uh, I came from more of the real progressive house world, like more EDM progressive house. But um, this uh, like the future house sound on Hexagon and stuff is more. It's more, it fits more in a tighter, smaller club as well. It's not just festival music, you know, hands in the air. It, <laughs> it fits in, it, it got those really great melodies and stuff, but it fits in a smaller club and in a more club set as well. Oh, okay. okay, nice. So if you want to give- my, that's, that's my opinion, like it's more clubby. So if you want to give any tips to our listeners or our viewers, what, what do you want to give? if they want to sign their record le- their songs with the big record levels? I think like the overall advice is uh, maybe, uh, of course, be patient. That's what everybody says. Yeah. Uh, but also like be realistic. This, um, this track took us a long time. It's super original. We got, we spent money on it as well because we got both the saxophonist and the vocalist. So it was like a big production. Um, even uh, for me, it's hard to only have that kind of releases. Yeah. Yeah. And you also see like it's only there. It's only like big artists almost that releases on the main Hexagon label. So what I'm trying to say is that don't, uh, don't be too hard on yourself if you don't have a release on one of those bigger labels okay there is lots of smaller labels that do do good work do release quality music there's a lot of labels that release really crappy music and do everything really crappy as well but uh, there are smaller labels that release quality music so um eventually i think after a few small releases with the good quality levels you will get there to to maybe release with the big level definitely in case the originality also plays a really important part because your song was very unique and that's what labels are looking for like if you send the same songs at 
as other producer, they're not gonna sign it because they already have that material. And I think you're that, that's true. Yeah, where it was very unique and also it was uh, moving into the future because like, for example, if you're gonna send a progressive house nowadays to labels, mm. nine out of 10, even your progressive house is perfect, they're not gonna sign it anymore because that sound is a bit old for them and they are looking for something new. That's 100% true. Like I had, uh, I had releases uh, like years ago where I actually sent the track to like 30 labels before I get a yes. So yeah. if you believe in the track and the track is good, as you said earlier, like it's not, it may not be that the track is bad or not good enough. It's just, uh, you have to find the right label. Exactly, yeah. It's just an opinion. So if you believe in the track and you can realistically, like if you're realistic and check uh, reference it to other tracks and see that okay this track is as good as those tracks or whatever you will find a label if you want to find a label but it could take some time okay yeah and yeah i think feedback also is really helps when you get the sense your songs to your friends or other producer and they give you the feedback because sometimes when you listen to something over and over there are yep. just some point that you can't see because you made that or yeah. But for us, it really worked. Sometimes there was like mm. some really obvious mistakes that we made in our songs, but we never noticed. But then when we send it to some other uh, producer, they just, just uh, point it out to us and they say, oh, that's a problem. And then, yeah, it really helps us to, uh, to fix that problem. So because when you want to send the song to big levels, it has to be perfect. There is no yep. room even little mistakes so that's true uh, it's really good with feedback like yeah. surround surround yourself with other good producers as well uh, yeah. that's really important and it do doesn't have to be like physical you can have those people around you online and like a good community overall that's nice yeah man i think that was it for today yeah and if you want to listen to his track you can find the link in the description below yeah. and send us your comment and what do you think about his track yeah man thanks for being with us today man thank you very much for the interest and uh, i always enjoy talking with you guys i hope you guys enjoyed the interview and the last tip that we're going to give you today is don't send unfinished demos to the labels they're not gonna like it and also if they listen to that demo, they won't open your email again. So don't send unfinished demos. So that was it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any more tips, please write them in the comments below. And we are happy to hear what you guys think and what are your tips and experiences about how to get signed with the big dance labels. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.